So another thing that we need to do every week is check for DBE spills. So I'm going to show the different places where those can happen. Uh, the first is the gray stage plate. So I like to remove this and then look around all here as well as in here to see if there are any obvious signs of dibenzyl ether. Um, in this case, it does not seem that there are. I'm just sort of looking at it here from the side. Everything seems quite clean. This is another place where sometimes things accumulate. And if I flip it over, uh, which sometimes helps, uh, we should see the same thing. Uh, I don't really see anything. I'm going to wipe it down anyway with a little bit of ethanol, but uh, this is sort of a good find. Uh, I'm just gonna put this next to the machine here. So the next place where we need to look for signs of DBE spills is here. So this is a place where there can be sometimes some DBE. It doesn't seem to be the case today. The next locations uh, where there can be DBE are here and here. And so today I see just traces. Um, so I'm going to grab a Kim wipe, some ethanol, and just wipe there. Uh, those are kind of frequent locations where you see spills. Another that you can see here um, is this area as well as the opposite area on this side. Uh, that's a very typical location where um, DBE spills and then from there because that is a plate that can be moved, um, let me show you, it will spill and go down in there. So if there is DBE there you will typically need to um, uh, check underneath it as well uh, and check the underside of the plate. Okay, so, so far so good. Uh, when I open this, I want to make sure that uh, this looks reasonably clean, which it does. There's only sort of traces of DBE a little bit on the sides, which is typical. If we see that this is covered in DBE, that means that uh, probably something bad happened uh, and we need to address that. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it in the uh, hood. The users always should do this with, um, with, with, with um, an absorbent uh, piece of paper. Uh, we, we don't need to if we're very, very careful. So uh, another typical place uh, where there can be spills is around the edges here on the cuvette itself. Uh, this is remarkably clean. Uh, which is good, um, but frequently there are spills here, and then when they spill, for example, there, they go down between the cuvette and the system, and then so then we have to wipe uh, both the cuvette eventually when we change the DBE as well as the system there. So this is actually looking remarkably good. Um, the final place that we need to check is under the cuvette, and so for that we need to remove the cuvette, and so Whenever you're manipulating the cuvette, this is really the step uh, where there's the highest level of risk. So you should be calm, you shouldn't be in a hurry or doing something else or in a cluttered environment with chairs that can trip you up. Uh, because really if you spill, this has 120 mLs of dBE, if you spill that on the system, you're, you're gonna cause uh, a massive problem. So the way this works is um, underneath the system, you can see there this thing, uh, that is a movable pedestal on, on which the cuvette sits. And so if we push up on that, the cuvette will go up and then we can grab it from the top. So I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, the angle is such that I don't think you can see me putting my hand underneath. Maybe from here. Uh, okay, let's see. Let me just put on my gloves again. All right, so... Uh, my dominant hand is my right hand, so I usually push the cuvette up from the bottom from that pedestal with my left. And I usually do this standing up. So I lift it, and then I grab it. And so one thing that's uh, useful to note here, you can see here, that is a spill. Okay? Now I'm going to go and take the cuvette very gently. 